Stand by. Ready? Mark. Reading. 47. Oh, 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 three. It was a few years ago that I first sailed across the Atlantic on Cyrano, a passage I'm not likely to forget. Shortly after our return, I received a letter from an amateur sailor greatly vexed by the challenge of celestial navigation. He asked where he might find a totally comprehensible essay on the subject that would equip him to navigate celestially. I replied that so far as I knew, no such treatise absent the full explanatory textbooks existed and gave it as my opinion that the principal reason for the failure of those I have read is that they endeavor to explain to the reader why celestial navigation works rather than simply how it works. I took this as somewhat of a challenge and it became my ambition to devise a method of navigating celestially that can be used by anyone who could read simple English. What follows is my own set of instructions on how to navigate celestially. Before we get into details, here is a preview of the overall procedure. First, we'll take a sight of the sun, noting the reading we get from the sextant and the exact time of day. Then we'll look up the location or geographical position, as they call it, of the sun in the air almanac. We will then assume a location for our vessel, our so-called assumed position. Next, we'll refer to the tables to find out how far from our assumed position we were at the time we took the site and in what direction. Finally, using this information, we will plot the exact position of our vessel. Let me suggest that you play this exposition through once just to get the feel for it, then play it through again, following along with the enclosed worksheet, which records these step-by-step -step procedures. Go back through the exposition as many times as you need to, pausing whenever you like in order to digest the information. Soon you will be able to go to sea and set out from anywhere in the world you want to and arrive at your destination. Now, to begin with, let me give you a few generalities. There are several systems of celestial navigation. If you learn one, it's easy to adapt to others. I like best HO249 because it's the easiest. It makes use of the Air Almanac, which is now published twice a year, one volume January to June, a second for July through December. The purpose of this almanac is to tell you the geographical position at any given second of the day of the sun and various stars and planets. Now, stars are nice to navigate by, but they are harder to spot and you need to work much faster, so for now, let's concentrate on the sun. Now, you should understand what the geographical position, or GP, as it is called, actually is. If you were to draw a line from any celestial body, the sun, stars, etc., to the center of the Earth, the point at which that line passes through the surface of the Earth is that body's GP. Now, uh, this sextant is the instrument used to measure the angle between the horizon and the observed body. These are the HO249 sight reduction tables which go with the air almanac. The purpose of these tables is to give you the difference between the assumed position of your vessel and the actual position of your vessel based on the angle your sextant gives you. Celestial navigation, like some forms of logical argumentation, functions by proving that you aren't where you think you are and giving you the exact measurement of your misjudgment. In order to know the GP of the sun, you must know the date and the exact time of day. For conceptual convenience, in celestial navigation, it is assumed that the Earth is motionless and that the sun is continuously moving around it. In the course of 24 hours, the sun travels 360 degrees right around the globe. This means, figure it out, 360 degrees divided by 24 hours, that in one hour, the sun moves 15 degrees. On a 24-hour clock, 
such as they use in the military, the hour hand moves 15 degrees around the circle of the clock face every hour. And when we are traveling from one longitude to another, we move our watch forward or back by one hour for every 15 degrees of longitude traversed. There is one thing we must clarify before going on. We are dealing with two different kinds of measurement, both of which are called minutes. One of them obviously is time, the other is degree of arc. Minutes of time are of course divided into 60 seconds. The seconds of time are very important because it takes just four seconds for the sun to move one nautical mile across the surface of the earth. Minutes of degree, on the other hand, are divided into tenths in the almanac, and these tenths of minutes of degrees are almost negligible, as they are equal to approximately one-tenth of a nautical mile. So we can always round off to the nearest minute of arc. After all, we're not plotting the location of an oil rig. Now, perhaps you're beginning to see that there is a happy correspondence between these two kinds of measurement, namely that one minute of arc equals one nautical mile equals four seconds of time. At this point, you have enough basic information, and I can now begin to give you the step-by-step -step procedure I promised, even if you haven't understood all of these basic concepts so far. If you follow along with the procedure, they should become clear.